Did you know that right now, there are 44 trillion gigabytes in the digital universe? I don't even know how to process that number. It's so huge. And the thing is, it's coming at you fast. 90% of all the digital data that is surviving right now has been created in the last two years. Oh my goodness, it's a tidal wave. Every day we send and receive 306 billion emails. Uh, The statistic I read just talked about the sending of the emails, but wait, (laughs) they arrived somewhere. (laughs) There are every day 3.5 billion Google searches for information every day. I mean, that is a lot of searching for information. There is no shortage of information in our world. And yet, our top prayer request is that God would give us wisdom and guidance. What's your will, Lord? We are bombarded by so much information. We can easily hear information from billions of people every single day, anytime we want, anytime, day or night. And yet we struggle to hear the only voice that really matters. Isn't that interesting? The problem is we're bombarded by information, but we're starving for revelation. We're bombarded by information, but we're starving for revelation from God. What's your will, Lord God? What's your plan for me, for my life? Today, I want to talk to you about how to refresh in 2021. There's a lot of different meanings of that word refresh. You know, refresh on the, uh, you can refresh a web page. You just click on that little round circle thingy with an arrow. You click on that, and it gives you the most updated version of that page. That's what a refresh does. You can also refresh your device by turning it off and on and getting it back uh, so that it's updated. And we want to be updated with what God has for us right now. So would you turn your Bibles, if you've got a Bible or on your, your device, that's fine too. And go to Daniel chapter 10, verse 2. It's a book of the Bible named after the guy who wrote it. We're going to talk a little bit more about Daniel today. I want to talk to you specifically about the benefit of prayer and fasting today. The benefit of prayer and fasting. So I want to just uh, give you a little bit of context of who Daniel is. Daniel was a bright, healthy, good-looking young man who was born into Jewish nobility. And he was taken captive by when his country was. His, he was taken captive when Babylon, a neighboring country, conquered Jerusalem. And this all took place about 600 years before Jesus. Daniel was educated in Babylonian culture and language and everything. So here's a, here's a person who was a part of the people of God. So for him, the national identity was very important. It was even beyond just, I'm proud to be an American. He was part of God's people, God's one chosen country, nation in the whole world. And he was taken captive because he was young, bright, healthy, good looking. That's a biblical um, description of him and born in nobility. He was taken captive and forced to learn a different language, a different culture. Must have been such a challenge for him. And yet, through it all, he kept his devotion to the one true God, which is just amazing because he was just bombarded by information about false gods and idols in Babylon. And he was such a man of integrity that he rose into power, into positions of power in the government. Now, can you imagine being captured, taken away, kidnapped in a sense, exiled to a different country, and then you become a leader in their government? I mean, it's really quite quite an amazing thing that happened. And he kept his devotion to the one true God, which meant that he obeyed God's law even when it was hard, and he prayed to God three times a day, like a formal prayer, not just like I'm driving my chariot and a quick prayer, you know, (laughs) while I'm going. No, he bowed to his knees. He opened his windows toward the temple in Jerusalem where he would like to have been praying, and he prayed. He flat out prayed every single day, three times a day. And God raised Daniel up to be one of the greatest prophets who ever lived And he showed Daniel visions of future world empires and even of the end of the world. And we're still learning from Daniel today. It's it's just amazing what God did with this one man's life. After 70 years 
in exile. So I don't know exactly how old Daniel was when he was captured, but he was good-looking, healthy, young, so probably a little bit younger than me. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe in his 20s, something like that. Uh, so just, you know, eh, just a little bit younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and after 70 years in exile, the Persian king, now a different, a different uh, land, had conquered Babylon, in fact. So now the Persians are running the show. And the Persian king Cyrus let God's people return. So all these captives that have been taken away for 70 years, he let them return to their native land to rebuild the demolished Jewish temple. It lay in ruins. Can you imagine if this building lay in ruins? Just how, how hard that would be. How, like, it, it's where we worship God. It's, it's where we come together, and it was just a pile of rocks. A couple years later, after, after this Persian king let the, the, the exiles go back to start rebuilding the temple, news got back to Daniel in Babylon that the work on the temple had come to a halt because of intense opposition. Seems like any time you want to do something for God, there is intense opposition. And sometimes we, we react and we go, oh, I must be out of God's will. But that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes you're smack right in the center of God's will and the opposition comes like a flood. God was still speaking to, to Daniel in visions. In fact, just right before the passage I'm about to read, God had given Daniel a fresh vision of the end times and of the life of the world to come. And it was troubling to him. He didn't know, what am I supposed to do with this? I feel like this is, like you, this is so weighty, so heavy, and I don't even understand it fully, but yet you gave it to me for a reason. This is confusing. This is terrible. And, but in the midst of all that, Daniel's heart sank at the condition of his people in Jerusalem. Can you imagine being all excited after 70 years? They're going back to rebuild the temple, and then the news comes to you that they gave up, in a sense. And they just quit working on the temple. And so his heart sank. And this, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 2, this is what it says. When this vision came to me, this, this, uh, this fresh revelation from God, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks, and the different translations of the Bible uh, tr treat this differently. Did, did it, where are we in those three weeks? It sounds like that uh, during this time of mourning, Daniel had been praying for three weeks for his people. It wasn't that he just was like just only sad, but he was actually, he, he was mourning, so it, it prompted him to pray. So then he goes on to describe that time, and he says, all that time... I had eaten no rich food. Literally, those two words are desirable bread. I had eaten no desirable bread. And he goes on to say, no meat or wine crossed my lips. And I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks, 21 days, had passed. And so he's trying to describe, he's just so serious and he's so troubled about his people, and he's just got to, he's just got to pray. He's got, got to set everything else aside. I'm not even going to froof myself up. I'm not going to be in a feasting mode. Uh, I'm just going to pray, and I'm mourning and grieving before God and saying, God, help my people. Now, I, the next verse, I want to read the first three words. On April 23rd. It's kind of cool uh, because uh, the, with our modern translations, we have so many things at our fingertips. They can cross-reference the date that he described. He didn't say on April 23rd. <laughs> he said on the 24th day of the first month of the year, the month of Nisan. Uh, and, but we are able to, the scholars are able to, to, to see what was happening at that time, and they have pinpointed it, yep, that was April 23rd of that year, because we know what year, because uh, all along in Daniel, he says, on the third year of so-and-so's reign, like, we, we know when they reigned. Yeah. So it's really pretty cool. So on April 23rd, something very powerful happened. You know, before I even go on to talk about what happened, I, I just want to draw your attention to Daniel's response to his situation. He fasted for how many days? 21 days of prayer and fasting. And this is where we get it. And I'm going to talk about lots of other people in the Bible who fasted and prayed and stuff, but this, this unit of 21 days of prayer and fasting, it, it comes from Daniel and what he did. 
So it's very important to notice that we, we might miss this. You've been reading about a lot in the Bible, and you're, you know, you're, you're used to reading in English, and you read, oh, on April 23rd, oh, it's whatever. I don't know what, it's like eight days after tax day. I don't know. What's, what's the significance of April 23rd? Well, we know because he says it's the first month. This is their January. Because the Jewish year started over when God brought them out of Egypt. And he used Moses and brought him out of slavery and out of Egypt. That was for them their salvation event. And they went to the Red Sea, which was their baptism event. And they went into the Promised Land, which was their deliverance event. Like, just like that, it was such, life started over for them when God brought them out of Egypt. And so God said, from this point on, way back, way back before Daniel, way back with Moses, God said, from now on, this is your first month of the year. This is your January. This is when it starts over for you. And I, I think it's kind of cool in God's providence that it was spring. And that, that sounds like God. It's the time of new life. And, it's, it, and this represents your new life. So that's kind of an important thing. The date is important. So this was the same month that Moses had brought them out of slavery in Egypt. And the people came out of Egypt on Passover night. Right? And that was the night that the death angel passed over them and God delivered his people. And God said, I want you to eat with all your clothes on, you know, eat your dinner. Like instead of, instead of like your sweats, eat, your, eat, uh, eat with your traveling clothes on. Eat with your coat on. That's just what I'm trying to say. So eat dinner with your coat on. And when I say go, it's go. Like be ready, people. When I say go, it's go. So they were like, okay, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, um, bitter greens with no salad dressing. Because we don't have time for sal- we don't have time to make a salad dressing, and uh, we're gonna make bread with no yeast, because we don't have time to wait around for it to prove, right? <laughs> Shelly's been watching bacon shows, so now I know a new word. <laughs> we don't have time to wait around for it to rise slowly, so they made it without yeast. God said, "No yeast for you," and, and this. And, and so they, they didn't, they, so what, their bread, instead of having a nice uh, comfy little loaf of bread that, you know, you squish it to see if it's fresh on the shelf, you know, it was like a cracker. <laughs> and in Deuteronomy 16, it says, it calls it the bread of suffering or the bread of affliction because it was associated with that time when they were there in Egypt, in slavery. So it was a bread that reminded them of that, but it was on the night that God brought them out. Amen. God told his people to create an annual festival in that month, starting with Passover and then a week of the, the festival of unleavened bread. So I don't know if the, I, I, I might have added an extra detail. It was a little extra biblical there. I don't know that they did it without yeast. They just didn't have time to wait for it to rise. But God said, now going forward, I want you to actually have a feast with bread that cannot rise. No yeast. And then we know later yeast is symbolic of sin. And like it's, it's all so cool and so symbolic. But God says, I want you to have a week-long festival in April where you eat different forever to remember your salvation experience. The night I brought you out of Egypt. Pretty cool. It was during this time that Daniel went on the Daniel fast. And he didn't eat any desirable, desirable bread. He didn't eat that nice chocolate cake. He ate crackers and fruits and vegetables for 21 days. And because Daniel was mourning and praying earnestly for the people, God, we've got to rebuild that temple. We've got to get back to worshiping you like we're supposed to. And he's pouring out his heart before God. He just didn't stop with a week. He went 21 days. Of, of just crackers or tortillas, uh, you know, bread without yeast, and foods made from fruits and vegetables. That's it. And that's what we call today the Daniel fast. All right, that's, it just comes from, because Daniel, this is how he chose to fast when he was pouring his heart out to God. So just after that it has ended, Daniel and some of the other guys with them were down by the Tigris River. And the Tigris River is there today. It flows into the Persian Gulf. It's, it, it's uh, one of the two major um, rivers in that area, the Tigris and the Euphrates. So they're down about the, at the Tigris. And suddenly, a glowing angel with all kinds of weird body features, you know, light coming out everywhere, 
his, it says that his body looked like a jewel. And the, I, it's the, when you look at what kind of jewel, it was like a bronze-looking jewel. So he's like glowing gold out through his clothes. This just brilliant, beautiful angel comes. And the people with him can't see, but they can hear what's going on. And they are scared, spitless, and they run away. And so Daniel is left there with the scary angel all by himself. And the angel's voice sounded like the roar of a multitude. It sounded like Niagara Falls when he talked. Okay, so this is epic. This is major. It's majestic. It's holy. It's incredible. It's going to skip down the same, same chapter, Daniel 10, verse 12. Then he, the angel, said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Guess why he said that? Because Daniel was afraid. <laughs> it was a scary angel. <laughs> it was. He said, don't be afraid, Daniel, since... The 17th day, is that what it says? Since the first day, you began to do two things. To pray for understanding. So, God, show me the meaning of this crazy end-time vision you give me. And to humble yourself before your God. Those two things. So Daniel was high up in the government. He's used to having feasts and, and people wait on him hand and foot. And he set that aside and he just humbled himself. And it just said, God, it's you and me. It's crackers and veggies. That's it. And I just got to pray. I'm just going to have a quick snack, and I'm going to get back to praying. That's what he's doing. The angel said, since the first day, 21 days ago, actually, it's, it's about 23 days by this point. Uh, since the first day you began to pray for understanding, to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. Wow. Day one. Now, Daniel saw nothing. Zilch, zip, scroll. What? For 21 days. I wonder what he's thinking. The angel says, I'll tell you what was happening. There was stuff happening. The minute you started to pray, the minute you humbled yourself, but the minute you started mourning and fasting and praying, heaven noticed. And we got busy right that moment. That moment, we got busy. But you didn't see it yet. From Daniel's person, and he says, I have come in answer to your prayer. I've come in answer to your prayer. From Daniel's perspective, he saw nothing. No answers, no revelation. Verse 13. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. You know, this is a scary angel with a light going out from every, all of his pores st who's, uh, who stands in the presence of God. And his way was blocked. We are getting a little, a, a very unique and privileged peek behind the curtain spiritually of what is going on when you pray. And then he says, then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with a the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. And the picture I get is like the battle is still going on. But he, uh, this angel that came to Daniel, he got away. He's like, Michael, you got this for a little bit. I have got to go to Daniel. He has been praying. He prayed and fasted for 21 days, and now it's even been a couple days past that. Verse 14. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. So we are getting to look at through, through the story of, uh, of Daniel, something that we don't usually get to see with our eyes. But I suspect that all around us, every minute, there is a war going on in the heavenlies, in the spiritual realm, and we just don't even know. Uh, we know that spiritual warfare delayed this answer, but we also know that God is bigger, and so he must have allowed this delay for a reason. For, for Daniel's good or for the good of the people? I, I don't know. Was it to develop Daniel's character? Like if God just every time the second we started praying, he just, just gave everything right then, made everything easy. Would we quit praying? I don't know. God knows. I, I'm not God. But we know that God is good. God is love. He's got good plans. And so for, for a good reason, God allowed this delay. So many times we don't see any progress from our prayers. Let's be honest. Let's be real. We pray and pray and pray and pray. And so because we don't always see progress, we don't always see that thing happen that we're praying for, sometimes we treat prayer like it's just a routine or a chore. 
well, good, I did my chore. I'm done, now I can go on with life. So many times we go on about our lives without stopping to mourn about the condition of our people. Maybe your family, your country, your nation, our government. Uh, do, we, do we care enough to say, I am so troubled by this. I'm going to set aside everything and just pray because I am troubled. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm depressed about what is going on in our world. It's not okay what is happening in the lives of people. We just go on about our lives and we just, we're too busy to stop and wrestle in prayer or to even humble ourselves before God. What goes through your mind when it appears that your prayer has not been answered? Maybe you think, well, God is withholding because I know my sin and I know my shortcomings. Or, or, or maybe you think, well, maybe I didn't pray right. Maybe I didn't pray with enough faith or I didn't use the right formula or the right words or something. Or maybe you think, well, perhaps God doesn't care about me. Maybe he's got more important things and he's not worried about little old me. Or, or maybe God doesn't even answer prayer anymore. There are so many things that, we, that go on in our mind because we can't see. We're so sensory. We can't see what's going on in the spirit realm behind the scenes. And so our mind wants to make up natural explanations for everything. There's a delay, so I must be sinful. Or there's a delay, so God must not be good. But that's not the truth. We just can't see what's going on. Now you know, even from this one little glimpse, and there's more glimpses like this in the Bible, now you know there's more than meets the eye behind the scenes when you start to pray. There's more going on than you can see. So that's why you got to pray and never give up. We always pray. That's one of our values. We always pray. Like, we are just going to be stubborn. We are going to pray until God says no. If he says no, great. Okay, then we'll stop praying about that thing. But until he says no or we see the answer, man, we are praying. <laughs> we are praying, and we're, we're not going to give up. So what do you think the action step is? I want to invite you to fast and pray for 21 days. I want to invite you to experience what Daniel experienced. And we're going to be starting the second Sunday in January, January 10th, which is our first month of the year. Daniel did this in his first month of the year, which was in the spring. But our calendar starts afresh in January. Just like Daniel, let's put food on the back burner for 21 days. And let's stir up the fire in your relationship with God. I was thinking about Daniel's life. And there are several times in Daniel where there's something um, interesting or amazing that happens related to food. 72 years prior to today's story, when Daniel was just a young buck, kidnapped and exiled to Babylon, he was, along with all the other captives, being forced to eat food that was not kosher, that he was not supposed to be eating. And he really stuck his neck out for him and three of his friends and said, we, we're, we're not going to eat that food. And the, the guy over him said, yes, you are. And he said, no, just test us. Just test us for, just give us 10 days and see if, if our God doesn't take care of us. And God did take care of them. And he did, he made them actually look uh, more healthy and better than the other people that were eating the rich food. Then after 70 years of captivity, I didn't read this story today, but a couple chapters back in the book of Daniel, he discovers the prophecy of Jeremiah, another prophet, that God had told Jeremiah it's going to be 70 years in captivity. And Daniel went, it's 70 years right now. And he prayed and he repented and he said, God, on behalf of my people, I confess all our sins and you were right to send us in captivity because you warned us if we sin, kept sinning, you were going to send us there. We kept sinning. You sent us there. You kept your promise. But you also promised it's only going to last 70 years. So please send us back. And God said to a Persian ungodly king, you are sending them back now. And he did. And he let them go back. Um, amazing. G G Daniel prayed and fasted, it says. And that king let them go back. And now Daniel mourned that the rebuilding of the temple had stopped. And he desperately needed to know a revelation from God about this, this vision. He didn't seem to view fasting as a way to twist God's arm. So I don't want us to, to think that either. 
It's not like, now I got you, God, you owe me. That is never the attitude of the creature to the creator. That's not how we approach God. He is sovereign. He is God. I am not. You are not. <laughs> we don't twist his arm. But it is, uh, it is uh, ex- we have the example of holy people like this, godly people of saying, God, I just want, I need to set aside everything else right now. I need to just focus on you. And I, I'm just going to press into your presence and whatever you do is great. I'm going to be praying about some stuff. I'm going to be asking you for some things, but I just want you. Pour out your spirit. I want to be with you. I want to hear you. You know, so many times when we pray uh, for uh, that top prayer request, I need wisdom from God. I want to hear from you, God. We're, we're picturing, I want to hear like, a, B, or C on the choice that's before me. But when you, I think you will find when you take 21 days of prayer and fasting and you just say, God, speak to me, he doesn't even, he's not that concerned about that thing. <laughs> like, that's fine. Red or blue bike, I don't care. Just pick one. <laughs> but he's like, I want you to know, I love you. I feel like you need to know, my child, I love you. Like, that's the kind of thing he might say. Or he might say, I've got a mission for you. I, I put you in this hard place at work because I got something for you to do there. Like he, there's stuff on God's mind that's not even on our minds. End time visions weren't even on Daniel's mind. So Daniel might have been praying, God, show me what to do with this law that's before the Senate. And God's saying, okay, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, listen, the end time, I, I want to tell you what I've told no one else on earth so that my people will know when it happens. You see what I mean? Like, that's the thing. We're going we're to spend time with God. We're gonna inv- I don't like that word spend. We're going to invest time with God to hear what he wants to say, Amen. his revelation. We're going to ask him for our stuff. Lord, would you heal my wife? We're going to be asking for stuff like that. Lord, would you provide for our church? We're going to be asking for asking for stuff. Yes, absolutely. But in that context of hearing, maybe even some of what we ask for changes. Wow because we're in the presence of Almighty God. Daniel knew that setting aside food and just not being in a feasting mode, just being in a fasting mode, would get, would get his, frame, his mind in a frame of mind where he could hear the revelation from God. And if I could summarize this sermon in this, it would be in this sentence. When you fast and pray, you step out of the flow of information, like I talked about at the beginning, and into the flow of revelation. When you fast and pray, you step out of the flow of information, the internet bombardment. You set that aside. Please give God a half hour where you're not on your phone. Please. And see what he will say. Step out of the flow of information. It is a tidal wave. It is a fire hose of information. Step out of that flow and step into the flow of revelation hearing from God, what's really on his mind. How should I pray, Lord? How should I pray about my wife? How should I pray about my church? How? Lord, show me. I want to pray in agreement with you. That's what happens in 21 days of prayer and fasting. And that's why I want to invite you to it. Moses fasted and, uh, from food and drink for 40 days when he went on the mountain with God and he got the Ten Commandments. And the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments on the rock. Wow! Wow! That is amazing. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He ate and drank nothing, it says in one of the Gospels, when he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to battle with the enemy and to to learn to to overcome. Like he had to go through the same temptations that we we go through. And he went through them and was Spirit-led and showed us how to overcome. That's, That's what happened to Jesus' big fast. Paul and his men's connect group were fasting and worshiping the Lord. And it was during that time when the Holy Spirit called Paul and Barnabas out of that group, two of the guys from the Men's Connect group, to be missionaries. That story's in Acts 13 too. When you fast and pray, you step out of the flow of information and you step into the flow of revelation. James 4, 6 to 8 says, God opposes the proud. Man, how many of you want God opposing you? I do not. Like that sounds really bad. It's bad enough when people oppose me if God was opposing me. And the scripture says God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we're going to humble ourselves as a church for 21 days in January. And we're just going to say, it's not about me right now. That's, That's humbling. 
It's not about me right now. It's about you, God. Amen. And we're gonna, when we do that, God gives you grace. You know what grace means? Gift. God gives you what you need when you humble yourself. So humble yourselves before God. Fast and pray with the right motive. So Jesus told us elsewhere, you don't fast and pray to show off I'm so spiritual. That's not what we do. <laughs> but fast and pray with the right motive. That is a way to, hum- that is a way to humble yourself before God. Listen to this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So we're going to take January, the first and best part of the year, and we're going to give it to God. And we're going to, by that, we're going to set the tone for the whole year. God, 2021 is yours. We did this in 2020, and it was God's. And it's been super hard, but God has been there. I, I recounted that. I think it was last week, last Sunday night. God has been there. And so we're going to give him 2021. Let's see what he's going to do. It's his year. It's not my year. It's his year. And we're giving it to him. Man, some great promises in James 4 there. That grace, the devil fleeing from you, God's presence in your life. Man, that is awesome. Purity in your life, cleansing and holiness. Wow, a clean conscience. That's what happens when you humble your heart and you press into God through fasting. When you fast and pray, you step out of the flow of information, that barrage from the internet, and you step into the flow of revelation from God. He's really the one voice we wanted to hear anyway. So would you please join Shelly and me for 21 days of prayer and fasting? If you're in our online community, would you please join us? You're part of our congregation. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this together. I encourage you to pick up this booklet in the lobby. If you're, if you're in person, there's a bunch of them on the lobby. Refresh, and it's got some very practical tips about how to fast and pray, how to do it in a healthy way, all that kind of stuff. If you're in our online community, do what I did. Go to signups and sign up for this, for Refresh in 2020. We have to kind of, you know, it's a workaround with our app. So it's sign up as if you were signing up for an event. And in that process, Uh, you uh, will be able to download a PDF and save this on your computer. So you can have this right in your hands. You can print it off on your home computer, whatever you want to do. So everyone online and in person can get that in your hands. Um, There is some great teaching in this booklet on choosing a goal for prayer and fasting, for how to fast in a safe way, how to to get the most spiritual benefit from your fast and more. So I, I, I want to, full disclosure here, we don't go without food for 21 days. I, I, my faith is not quite there yet, maybe in a future year. So Shelly and I each, each kind of fast differently. I prefer to do a few days of fasting and just juice only or broth maybe, and then a few days of the Daniel fast. Now you know what the Daniel fast is, eating fr- uh, foods only made with fruits and vegetables. Uh, Shelly finds uh, a, a more benefit in just totally fasting for a meal on a, on a given day and just devoting that whole time to God. Uh, where for me, sometimes I'm eating, you know, a vegetarian and sometimes I'm um, just totally fasting. Uh, but I, I do like this. I like feeling a reminder because uh, e- eating fruits and vegetables to me, if you know me, if I have not had meat, I have not eaten. <laughs> so fruits and vegetables to me are just to keep me alive for 21 days. I am hungry the whole time. And I like that because I choose to make that a reminder. Oh, yes, I'm hungry. Okay, God, I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray right now. So then I have focus times of prayer, but also just throughout the day. Every, every hunger pain, oh, yes, Lord, it's you I'm seeking. It's not the things. It's not the stuff. The most important thing, however you fast, most important thing is that you capture time from food and invest it in your relationship with God. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to step on a couple of toes here. Just giving up ice cream or gum that's not a fast. That's not the kind of fast we're talking about. That, that, that's not it. All right. Fasting where you give up, you set aside some food. So like grabbing some carrot sticks, I still ate, but that takes one second to prepare as opposed to, you know, a half hour on the meal and the shopping, all that kind of stuff. So I'm investing that time. That, so I want to challenge you. Even if you only fast one day in the 21 days you participated, and I will cheer you on. That's great. There's no big like guilt trip. If you fast one meal, great. Just do it during this time so we're doing it together. And experience God during that, and you're going to go, oh, I want more. I want more. I know you will. 
but, you, but it, it takes that, that um, capturing of time to have time and to have focus with God. Uh, with time invested uh, in your relationship with God might look like praying, reading the Bible, reading Prevail, the devotional we're giving out uh, uh, for all of you live, um, uh, journaling, meditating on God's Word, stuff like that, okay? So uh, invest time with God. And I believe this, God will meet you there. He will. He will. I've seen him do it now for, this is our, probably our 11th year, uh, 11th or 12th maybe, um, God will meet you there. He will. I promise you, he will meet you. When you devote time to him, uh, he, will, he will speak to you through his word and through prayer. I want to invite you to plan now. Plan now. If, you, if, you're the kind, if you're a planner, put in your calendar now. Every Wednesday during the 21 days, 6 o'clock, I want to see you. Whole congregation gathered right together in this room. Every Wednesday, 6 o'clock. And then every Sunday, half hour before service. Uh, and we, we, you will see something powerful happen as we pray together. When you, when you fast and pray, you step out of the flow of information and into the flow of revelation from God. Why don't you stand to your feet? I've gone long. I apologize for that. But I hope that you're inspired to pray and fast. It's going to be so good. Judith, are you excited? Yes, I am too. Our prayer director, woo, we're ready. Let's go. Let's bring it on. Bring it on. And we know there may be some spiritual warfare. Okay, there will be. Yeah, there will be. But God will prevail. His purposes prevail. I love to pray for you. Right online, would you pray with us too in the room? Would you pray? Let's bow your heads and pray. Lord God, Holy Spirit, come and show us. I pray that you would speak to every one of us about what you're calling us to do. Some of us have never fasted and prayed before, so just even doing one meal seems so scary, but I pray you'd call us there, each one of us, Lord. Some of us have done a meal before, and you're going to call us to do something different or more or, or to invest the time differently for you. But I just pray, Holy Spirit, right now, we've been praying that our, our hearts are open, we're open, come, Holy Spirit, open up the heavens. We're praying, come right now and show us, call us, what you have for us. And Lord, I'm going to even lay down before you. I have a bit of a, of a habit, a bit of a routine of the way I pray and fast. And so right now, Lord, with my open hand, I'm even offering that to you. Lord, what do you want to do? How do you want to meet me during this time of prayer and fasting? I'm open. I'm willing to set aside my thing, my plan to go your way and experience your presence. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. With your head still bowed, I'm just, I, I'm just wondering if there are some of you that uh, you, uh, the, the fasting thing maybe is kind of new or you're not sure, you know, what to do this year, but will you open your heart to the possibility of prayer and fasting? Maybe even take a baby step of one meal per week, three meals total or more. Will you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in the, like, to set the goals, the type of fasting, the number of days, etc. If you're open to Holy Spirit leading regarding fasting Amen. and prayer, would you raise your hand? And in the room, just about everybody's got their hands raised. It's really exciting, really great. And online, would you raise your hand to God? And Lord, you see our hands raised. We're open. We'll do it, Lord. We'll do it. It is a sacrifice. It is painful in some ways physically, but it is so rewarding spiritually. I pray that you would pour out a blessing so much that we cannot contain it, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With your, with your head still bowed, I, I want to give you one more invitation. And I just don't want to assume anything. How are you with Jesus? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you know you're a Christian? Do you know the, uh, what, your future? After this life, do you know where you will spend eternity? You can know. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's not like, you know, you can just choose your own way. Many ways lead to heaven. No, not really. Jesus said, I am the way. And so I want to invite you to Jesus. Not to me, not to our church, but to Jesus. How do you, how do you put your faith in Jesus? How do you become his apprentice? Turn from your sin 
turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. That's how. If today you want to do that, today you, maybe you're coming back to Jesus, or maybe you're giving your life to Jesus for the first time, if you want to do that today, would you just raise your hand and that will tell me I should pray for you. And online, would you just raise your hand to God and he sees you right where you are. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. Would you pray after me? Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer today in the room or online, we applaud you. That's awesome. Would you just text faith in Jesus to the phone number 97,000? And that will let us know that you have made that decision today. And we would just like to cheer you on. God bless you. Amen. Who else is so excited to start this next month? Can we just give God a hand? Praise God. Yes. Guys, I'm so excited because we get to enter in to real spiritual warfare together. We get to participate in behind the curtain. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Praise God. Well, we are so glad you came today. We want to stay connected with you. If you are new to NFC, would you just text just that to 97,000, new, the number two, NFC, I remember our name, <laughs> just so we can stay connected with you. And we, we, we love to just send you an email, get to know you, just say welcome. Also, if you are watching online, would you just subscribe to our channel? It just, it helps other people find us so that more people can hear the, the message of, of hope and grace that God gives to us. It was so good to see you this week. I'm so looking forward to this week. I'm looking forward to this fast and entering into this with all of you. God bless.